Today was a joint mass casualty and extrication exercise. We're just exercising our theater personnel recovery uh, capabilities. So there was about like, hmm, I would say 25 to 30 patients that we had. And uh, we have about six uh, PJs out here working. And they all play a different role. So we have a crow and a team leader, and they play that uh, the kind of up and out role, coordinating with aircraft and exfil and whatnot for the patients, and as well as coordinating the team and who's doing what and uh, where they're doing it and whatnot. Then you have all your team members, and they do all the, the searching for the uh, casualties and all the medical work inside of the CCP, which is the casualty collection point. Yeah, if you have like an entrapped patient. You have to use different means other than just opening the car door to get them out of the vehicle. So today we use a few saws and the jaws of life to extricate that patient who is a critical patient and we're trying to get access him to different purchase points as quick as possible. And that's something that we don't always get exposed to and seeing as how they have a, a need to get rid of these, we can go ahead and take these, experience how it is to actually get into these vehicles from different, different, av or different angles, uh, try different techniques out and uh, also try and coordinate with other, other units to see how well we work together. So we're the only dedicated personnel recovery asset in theater right now. So if the Air Force doesn't provide these capabilities, uh, us being Guardian Angel, it's what we train to. And we're not a conventional unit that is assigned a specific task with personnel recovery. We train to this every single day, home station. Um, so it's important that they put us out here because we're the most capable force of, of doing personal recovery. I love training and knowing that there's something that just really happened in real life. I have the skills to save these guys and bring them back home to the families, you know? So that's what makes it all worthwhile. Vulture Rescue was a mission rehearsal that came to fruition by three squadron commanders in the Expeditionary Operations Group. Uh, myself and 83rd Rescue Squadron, 774th Airlift Squadron, and 455th Air Medical Evacuation Squadron. Between those three squadrons, we have a lot of capability that enable long-range personal recovery in Afghanistan. So for the C-130s, they can deliver our GA personnel uh, much quicker than we can in an H-860G. They can do pair jump and uh, jump operations with our, our GA, provide on-scene commander capability, and also provide transload capability. So if we have a survivor, we can translate them to C-130 and get them to medical care much, much quicker. With our air medical evacuation folks, we also have a group of people who can do higher level patient care. So we can transfer, uh, transfer our survivor to air medical evacuation and let them give them patient care that uh, increases their ability and uh, capability to survive. And then lastly, on the 83rd Rescue Squadron, dedicated CSAR assets and theater uh, in a mission set that we're very comfortable with bringing those other capabilities in and giving us more capability in the theater, giving us more ability to mitigate risk and recover isolated personnel if we need to, uh, regardless of what service or nationality they are. Once on scene, C-130 checked in, got a hold of the survivor, found out some basic information about the survivor, uh, found out their location, confirmed the condition, and looked for any threats in the area prior to jumping the team in. The team got in, got oversight, had eyes on the survivor, jumped out a six-man team uh, to rescue our survivor. One uh, PJ will move to the survivor, check his vitals, check condition, and authenticate that this is actually the survivor we're looking for, while the remainder will hold a security element. We'll start going through all the medical uh, conditions, especially concerns with a back problem, and getting him onto a backboard. That's where we'll start bringing more members of his team in to provide the patient care that we need so we don't have further injury to the survivor. They'll package them up. By package them up, I mean one, prepare them for movement, make sure that they're ready, provide them immediate trauma care, including medical uh, and narcotics if needed, so that we can help move them to a higher level care. At this point, this is the part of the mission that's a little bit different than what we typically do. This is where we add a transload to the mission rehearsal. So they met up at a forward operating location. The C-130s landed, the H-860s came in behind to offload the survivor onto the C-130. 
simulation there is that we can get that survivor to patient care. First, there's a higher level of patient care available on the C-130. The aeromedical evac team, they come with a lot of capability, a lot of medical equipment, and a lot of expertise. So they can uh, increase that patient care for the survivor. And we can also now, by having them loaded on the C-130, they can move them to a higher facility such as ba uh, Bagram here much, much quicker than we can in the back of a helicopter. So from that transload piece, we were able to get the survivor back to um, medical facilities as quickly as possible to begin the reintegration process. Vulture Rescue was designed to be a very difficult mission to execute. It was designed to really test what our abilities were in theater and really push on our operators to make sure that they were fully capable. And these guys executed to the highest level. And it showed that they have been training and working and integrating together and coming up with standards prior to ever executing this mission. It showed that our guys come to theater ready to go and ready to fight and work together really well together. Yesterday, the 83rd Rescue Squadron had the opportunity to work with our Afghan partners, and specifically the A29 part of TAC Air. Went out there and did combat search and rescue integration training with both U.S. and Afghan pilots and air crew, focusing on survival, rescue techniques, coordinating with air assets, and finally, we did hoist and extraction of Afghan pilots out there uh, at Hunter. I think it's important for us to uh, demonstrate how something like that happens because they're obviously building up their air force, and just to demonstrate how well, how effectively uh, two completely separate units can come together to accomplish uh, one mission. So for example, they're out um, you know, shooting bad guys, killing things, uh, and if they were to lose someone uh, on the ground and he's down there safely, how another uh, unit can come and pick up and they can work together to uh, keep that guy safe and get him back home. One is that we have U.S. advisors that fly with our Afghan partners. We want to make sure that we're ready to conduct personal recovery and conduct combat search and rescue to recover all of them if we need to and there's an isolating event. Second piece is helping develop, helping the Afghans develop their capability for combat search and rescue as well, including developing uh, basic life support and uh, survival techniques, SEER techniques, those type of things, all the way up through the more advanced uh, extraction and recovery in a contested environment. The most fulfilling thing uh, when we go out and uh, do missions like this is um, demonstrating our capabilities, not only to our partners, the Afghans, for example, but it validates our capabilities to our own coalition partners and just U.S. Uh, folks as well. Ultimately, the mission was highly successful. A lot of opportunity and a lot of learning on both sides, both the Afghan side, the U.S. advisor side, and on our side. It's increasing our ability to conduct our mission, make sure that we're ready to do combat search and rescue for both U.S. and Afghan forces if needed, and also increases their ability to be uh, more survivable in that situation if they find themselves in it. The, the Pedros provide PR support for the uh, Afghanistan AOR. Uh, pretty much anything that's flying, or we're there to cover down on. Uh, the 16 is our primary customer. Uh, we're more we're worried about them. We watch out for them quite a bit. But we cover down on every uh, CFAC asset and then our sister services as well. If anyone's out there and they need, uh, need assistance, we're always ready to go. So we get the call. Uh, we already have duties delineated throughout the team. So my element leader, who's one of my PJs, takes, uh, takes my guys out to the birds, gets it configured and ready to go, while myself and the team leader go up to the talk. We, uh, we get the details on what's going on, figure out how we're going to execute the mission. Once that's done, we come downstairs, grab all our stuff, head to the aircraft, brief my team on what's going on, what the situation is, so everyone has SA on what's going on, and then we get on the aircraft and you know execute whatever we need to do. All right, so the HH-60 is pretty much the, uh, the Black Hawk from the Army. We took it, made an Air Force variant and it's our, our primary aircraft in the Air Force for personal recovery. We have uh, two, they're special mission aviators, so on both sides they're manning the guns. They have uh, quite a depth responsibility, so they're doing everything from power calculations to making sure the uh, PJs are informed and that their gear is ready to go as well. As far as uh, my role as a pilot, uh, obviously I'm on the, on the sticks most of the time, but I also have my co pilots doing that. I'm also doing mission managing, coordination with other assets, and then uh, terminal area, uh, talking to the survivor. Got five PJs that I work with, and they're extraordinary at the job. And they're going to be the ones that they're going to be the ones that bring someone home. Being able to multitask, I'd say, is one of the hardest things to do. 
just because you're having to do multiple things. Worry about survivor, worry about the team, worry about the threat, worry about getting picked up or not getting picked up. If you gotta move, where do you gotta move to? Um, you know, injuries sustained. There's a lot of things that come into, you know, the actual mission that you're doing. Yeah, you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes. You know, I, I hope that uh, if it's my worst day, it's on my last day. And that's what we're out there to do for everyone else. Make sure that their worst day is in their last one.